Themyscira is under attack, only you and your fellow Amazons can stop the enemy threat. Hey there, it's Theo from Geeky Gamer Guy. This video I'll be doing a first round playthrough of Wonder Woman Challenge of the Amazons from Prospero Hall and Ravensburger. For this playthrough I'll be doing a two player game and controlling the mighty Amazons Philippus and Diana. They'll be fighting against Ares. Let's spring into action. Arr. All right, so I already went ahead up and set up the game. So we have ourselves, our two heroes over here. We have Philippus and Diana, and then we have Ares over here. The island's defense is gonna start at 20. And depending on the number of players, Ares' health is gonna be a little bit different. For a two player game, Ares' health is 15, starting right here at the top right there. Then we need to make sure that we check every enemy mat because everything is just a little bit different depending on which enemy you play. So at the beginning of each game, we have to do a couple of things. At the beginning of the game for Ares, we're going to choose one player to have the Sword of Hephaestus. I gave Diana, of course, the Sword of Hephaestus, but it could be anyone. But Diana, for this game, is going to have the sword. Then we have to place a blessing token on each monument and temple region, which I already had and did. So we have two temples down here and two monuments up here. So the game is played over five phases. The first phase is the start of round phase, depending on the enemy and they're gonna do stuff and they're gonna be the ones that mess everything up for us. So here we go. So for the start of round for Ares, we're gonna draw one card, ignoring the effects on the card and just moving Ares to the very bottom location. So this one is the Colosseum. So we're gonna move Ares, we're gonna discard this, and then we're gonna move Ares to the Colosseum. So there he is, the Colosseum, he's pretty close to the palace. We can go for him real easy. Then you're going to notice in the region and what's there. If there are warriors, which are the white cubes right here, he's going to turn white cubes into purple cubes. And purple cubes, if they get to the palace, will lose us a lot of defense. So we definitely don't want that to happen. If there aren't any warriors, like in our case, then we place two servants of war into the Colosseum. So two Servants of War go into the Colosseum. Then we draw cards according to player count. So for a two player game, we only draw one card, but depending on the number of players, it will increase. So we have ourselves threatening. Deploy three Servants of War to the square. So we're gonna put three Servants of War to the square, right here. That is the end of the start of round phase for Ares. Now we're gonna move into the strategize together phase. Strategize together phase, we're gonna draw hero cards right here. Some of them are gonna be face up and some of them are gonna be face down. Two hero cards are normally what you deal. So we have two for Diana. And that's two adaptables. All right, she is, she is hella adaptable this round. And then for Philippus, if you see on the player board, she has a special ability that during the strategize phase, she gets to draw one additional face up hero card. So we're gonna give her three. We're just gonna put it down here. We have one, two, swift, experienced, and the last one is confident. She is confident. You get it, Philippus. You be confident, girl. And then we're gonna draw three face down cards for each player. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the three face down right here. And we'll come back to those in a minute. But right now, we're gonna strategize based off of the face-up cards. So the face-up cards that we have available to us are pretty helpful, but what we're gonna do is each action is going to be corresponding to an emblem symbol. So each card has two to three emblem symbols that can be used for different actions. We have two basic actions. We have a move action, which uses the feet. And as of right now, only Philippus is the only one that has feet, but now that we were talking about special skills for Philippus, a special skill for Diana is that she may move one region for free during the strategize phase. So I think what we're gonna do, since we have Ares really close to us, we're gonna move her to the palace. So we moved her to the palace right here for free, because it's Diana and she gets to do that, okay? Then we need to fill out, figure out everybody else's stuff. So right now, this is when the players will would, would decide on what they wanna do for each other, how they wanna use their cards. But remember, there's also some face down cards that they'll be able to use later when they're taking the actions. So as of right now, I think what I wanna do is I wanna move Philippus up to the square to try to take out some of these servants of war. She has lots of movement, 
for the servants of war, you need two swords right here to be able to do anything, to be to be able to take them off the board. So I think what is best is we're gonna we should we should maybe move Philippus up to the square, and that's the best thing for her. And then for Diana, what Diana should be doing is she should be taking out the Servants of War at the Colosseum. So if we let these orange cubes get to the end of the round, they're going to deal defense losses to us. So we definitely want to make sure that we don't do that. So I think Diana's going to take out those. But we don't know because depending on what we get right here, it might be a little bit different. Now that we figured out a strategy, we're going to play cards. Now what you do during this step is you grab the cards your face up cards and your face down cards and you look at all of them and then you choose three actions that you want to do. Now this one's a little bit different because you do not talk during this. You figure it out. So if you have yourself a better strategy that works for everybody that might help because remember you have to do stuff that's going to help everybody. You don't want to help just yourself but help everybody then you do that. What I'm going to do is a little bit different. I want you all to feel like you're playing the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the strategy for all of them and then come back to it. What is this? And the rest gets discarded. Then we're going to do Diana. Ooh, okay. So along with on the face down cards, she just she discovered a relic. So the relic that is available to us now is the Lasso of Truth. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it. I think I'll place it right here for right now. And I'm going to put it on there. So I'm going to put it on the board. The Relic of Truth will start in the vault. So right now the relic is not anyone's. It's just out here for anybody to be able to grab. But the relic is when moving, you can choose to move a tie, move an obstacle with you. So I could basically take Diana and I can move and I could take one of these orange cubes with me. It's really par powerful and helpful when you don't want to waste all those emblems on just maybe one thing, but you can grab something and then you can use it to, to destroy it later. Now she has herself four cards left over. And that, that's the, that's all she can do. All right, so now that we've played actions for both players, we move on to the take action step. And for the take action, we reveal simultaneously all the action that's being used. So for the first action, both players are going to flip over their cards to show what they can do. And now, in any order, they can take their turns. Sometimes you can even do it simultaneously. So what we're going to do with Philippus is we're going to move her up to the square with those two feet. So that does that for the first action. And powerful for Diana. She has four swords. The swords can be used to take out the servants of war. But if we have four of anything, any symbol, we, we could also use it to give damage to the enemy. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to take out these cubes. Servants of war, goodbye. Be gone, servants of war. So that is for the first action. Now we're going to reveal the second action. So the second action. We have experience for Philippus. So what she's going to do, she has two swords. So she's going to take out one of these cubes. And then for Diana, she has adaptable. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the stars, since we're at a star location, to put out some warriors. And what warriors do is they increase the numbers of your played cards. So like, let's say I played uh, two swords, I could use the two warriors to be able to make them into four swords while also discarding them and all of that sort of stuff. They're super powerful. And also we got to make sure that Ares doesn't convert them into purple cubes, converting them into corrupted Amazons because that's not good. So now number three. Number three is this one. So we have Confident and adaptable. So for confident for Philippus, we're going to take out only one of these cubes because she only has three swords and she needs four to be able to take out both of them. So that one goes. And then for Diana, she has herself another adaptable. And I think what she's going to do is she's going to put out more warriors. We could always use more warriors, y'all. One of the keys that I've noticed in this game is you definitely could always use more warriors to help augment some of these abilities because sometimes you just need like one or two, just like what happened with Philippus, to be able to do anything. This is just going to be like taking out those cubes. So it's a like 
Really important to put out warriors. Now that we've done the fourth phase, we're gonna moving on to the fifth and final phase, which is the end of round, which is the enemy attacks. To do the end of round, we're gonna look to the enemy mat. And on the enemy mat, it says, you'll lose one defense for each region with a servant of war. So right now, we only have one region with a servant of war because there's one that single one. Philippus just couldn't get that one sword, so we're gonna be lowering the defense by one. Then you would lose you would lose two defense for each corrupted Amazon that is moved into the palace, but right now the palace is fine. Don't worry about it, the palace is cool, like it's fine. Lastly, you would lose three defense for each region with five or more obstacles, including just both servants of war and corrupted Amazons. But right now, everything's fine. It's pretty quiet in Themyscira, we're cool. So I think we did a pretty good job. If I do say so for our first round, I'm here for that. Let's discard all the cards to the discard pile. At the end of taking your action, you're supposed to discard these cards, but we're gonna just put these right here. And there we go. And that concludes the first round playthrough of Wonder Woman Challenge of the Amazons. If you wanna see what happens next, stay tuned for my extended play. Or if you wanna get right to what I think about the game as a whole, check out the review video. Hope you enjoyed this first round. If you like this video, tap the like button. Also consider subscribing to the channel. Plus hit the bell to not miss out on future videos. Until next time, stay geeky, keep gaming. Oh, y'all, I don't even know what I'm gonna do next.